Hi, I'm John, welcome to Premium Builds. Here's something that's been intriguing me a little bit. Can you run one stick of RAM on a DDR5 platform? I'd hope it's pretty well known by now that with DDR4 RAM, you need a two stick kit of RAM because that enables dual channel mode. And that's a really big performance boost. Put simply, it's double the bandwidth. You've got two paths of memory access that the CPU can speak to the RAM through. And that enables much better performance. And typically you're looking at around 10 to sometimes 20% performance boost in games just by having two sticks of RAM over one. However, there's something interesting about the specification of DDR5. Each RAM stick is actually split into two halves with the memory controller able to access each half individually. Therefore, each stick itself is actually a dual channel stick. And when you've got two sticks together, you're actually in kind of pseudo quad channel memory mode. The problem with DDR5 at the moment is of course the cost of it with kits at $300 and up. Therefore, you might be considering, well, could I buy one stick now? It'll be 16 gigabytes because the smallest sticks available are 16 gig and add a second stick down the line when costs come down and I can afford to upgrade. That's a way perhaps to get onto the DDR5 platform early. So I thought it was worth testing this. Do we see the same kind of performance detriment running a single stick of DDR5 or can the architecture of the RAM stick itself help overcome that and deliver decent performance? To test it, we ran some empirical testing on both synthetic tech benchmarks and games to see what was up. If you value evidence-based testing and results and the way we present them, please do just click like and subscribe. It helps our channel massively and allows us to continue to provide this kind of content for you. First up, let's take a look at a couple of quick synthetic tests. We've demonstrated elsewhere that Cinebench isn't the best test of RAM performance, but here we can see that the single stick of DDR5 is at the bottom of the chart with a score of around 22,500 points. That's even operating at the 6000 MHz XMP mode. Meanwhile, in the 3D Mark Time Spy CPU tests, we see the dual stick kit topping the chart at 6000 MHz CL36, but taking away one stick sees it score 1400 points lower landing next to distinctly average DDR4 RAM kits at 3200 MHz. Moving on to some gaming tests, sorry but not sorry, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is still the gold standard in uh, looking at how memory actually impacts game performance because of its ability to run very, very consistently run to run and also giving us numbers under the hood that allow us to have a look at the impact on game engine performance. Here we can see that dropping to one stick, even at 6,000 megahertz, reduces DDR5 performance down to 3,200 megahertz DDR4 levels. This result is also repeated in the overall FPS score in the benchmark. The single stick configuration here is close to the bottom, performing beneath the DDR4 3,200 megahertz kit overall and dropping 25 FPS, over 10% in overall performance. Forza Horizon 5 shows the same effect. The single stick again puts it down with DDR4 3200 MHz in game engine performance, dropping the average to 332 FPS from 375 FPS, over 10%. In the overall average result, it's less detrimental, but it's still a 4 frames per second drop in average performance. And finally, looking at flights in 2020, interestingly, we only see a small drop in performance here, despite the game's dependence on CPU and therefore RAM performance. The single stick performs very closely to the dual stick kit. You won't notice a difference in these two configurations. So in this snapshot of results, we can see that we do get the same kind of detrimental effect that we anticipated from moving to a dual stick down to a one stick kit of DDR5 RAM. Obviously, the system as a whole is still incredibly high performance, and i7-12700K with DDR5 RAM at 6000 MHz isn't going to be disappointing, but you can see that there is actually some performance detriment to running the RAM in this configuration. And that isn't down to going from 32 gigabytes down to 16 gigabytes. All the other RAM kits you're seeing in the tests is 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and we can see how the 16 gigabyte single stick of DDR5 compares to them in the results I've shown. So in fact, whilst the data bus is split into two halves for DDR5, it's still actually the same width as a single stick of DDR4. You're looking at a 64-bit bus width total to access the RAM. Therefore, you can still only shunt so much data across it on any given clock cycle. The reason for DDR5 to be split the way it is, is to improve memory access efficiency because you can access memory on one side of the stick and the other side independently, which allows the system as a whole to make more efficient use of the RAM sticks available to it. Overall then, in this snapshot of testing, you can see that there is still that same detrimental effect of running a single stick of RAM, even though it is DDR5. It performs down around the level of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM, despite the fact it's clocked at 6000 MHz. Um, the other issues with latency on DDR5 do mean that it's struggling to find performance, particularly when you put it into a single stick configuration.
So then the conclusion of this short video is we are still going to make the same recommendations for RAM going into the DDR5 generation as we have done for DDR4. You really should strive to get two sticks of matching RAM and run them in proper full dual channel mode or quad channel I guess if you want to call it that on DDR5 in order that you get full performance out of your system. That said you've seen the level of performance detriment to uh, running one stick. It's not horrific and we could understand if you really wanted to get onto a DDR5 platform early or you find a great deal on a DDR5 motherboard, it is a viable way to reduce costs, get 16 gig of RAM still, and get up and running uh, sooner on a DDR5 platform. The potential problems with finding a matching stick in future and getting everything working well together, and the overall cost of DDR5, it's still not something we'd really recommend doing. We're still, I think, the 12th generation of Alder Lake, uh, it's well worthwhile running these CPUs with fast DDR4 RAM. You get better performance, lower cost, and it's really the optimum configuration for this year if you're going to be running these new Intel Alder Lake CPUs. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, relatively short but hopefully informative video. If you've liked it, please do like and subscribe. It massively helps our channel and it means we can continue to bring you content like this. Please do also check out premiumbuilds.com. We've got loads of advice and recommendations on there to help you get the very best value for money as you build your next PC.